everybody. My name is Harry Jacobs and I am the North of 60 Gamer and welcome. Today is, oh my god, what the hell's on my table day? Uh, I had f f four or five Kickstarters all converge all at the same time along with uh, orders from Board Game Bliss and 401 Games. It's crazy. It's like waiting for these Kickstarters and then hear about all the logistic issues and then poof they arrive at my door and I just broke the boxes down I've had these for some of them for a week or so uh, not everybody not everything here you're going to see today is a Kickstarter some of them I got from Board Game Bliss some of them I got from 401 Games uh, and some of Kickstarter so without any further ado I'm going to shrink myself down and figure out how to unpack this mess for you so here we are i've shrunk myself you can see this table is just chock full of uh, games my mouse down here of course but technology is technology and i can't hide it on my little space and here's my little knight and demons who helped me uh play uh quarter main which is a new game coming to kickstarter it is a deck builder based on colonial africa uh with alan Quartermain. so uh, look forward to that. Uh, it will be going up eventually once we coordinate that with the Kickstarter. That's all I can say about it right now. It was a really fun game and look for that uh, coming up. That was a public service announcement. First up, uh, and sorry there is a bit of reflection be just uh, because it's bouncing off the roof and we have shrink wrap. So the first game of course is Splendor. Now this is an older game. I've been playing it with a friend who has a copy, and I just love it. I think my wife would like it, so I thought I'd pick it up. It's not a very expensive game. Uh, I did not get the Marvel version. I got the original version, though. I think I should have bought the Marvel version, but it's about $10 more because of the licensing or whatever it is. So this is Splendor, and that is one of the games that just got. This is from 401 Games. Uh, I put it in order. Let's move that along here. This one's been around, uh, so I'm a little late to the party, but Hadrian's Wall. Nothing but good stuff about this game, and so I thought I finally had to take the dip. I've got to try it. I don't know whether I will do a playthrough, because there's tons of playthroughs, and I'm just late to the party. But I may, anyway, from a solo perspective, uh, for my friends at Board Games, for one, uh, I am doing some exclusive content, and maybe that will be one of the exclusive contents. Ratcatcher. I do have Ratcatcher. I, I, it, it came in a little while ago. I just wanted the really cool dice pad, dice pad for it. Uh, I don't have a lot of dice pads uh, like this. It's just, this, you know, there's grommets here in the middle. There's grommets here at the ends, and you just clip them together and make a, a dice bowl. This one was interesting. It was on a New Year's Eve sale or christmas sale, boxing day new year's between boxing day and new year's gray fox games war of the worlds and this is the humans versus the aliens and it is a two-player asymmetrical game based on war of the worlds the new wave uh, it is Jet game studio a game by dennis plastinen and i have played it on tabletop simulator not a bad game it's been around but this is new to my table and it is a two-player game uh chris and i i think we'll be playing that Here's an interesting one, Chai, Dan and Connie Klasmier, and it's 1 to 5, 8 up, 20 to 60. Can you brew the perfect cup of chai tea? I try to do that here. Uh, we have our own spices, and I often buy the tea bags. Uh, we also brew our own with black tea and milk and the spices. My wife likes to do that. I just like going, here's a tea bag, steep it in some milk. Uh, but we will have an opportunity to play this game in the next week or two. It is solo. Again, I will probably feature this more because it is a solo game and I want to play it. Oh, next. So two games from Orbital Scrappers. There we are. First of all, before we look at those, um... Orbital by uh, Jacob Frexelis. Of course, we know Jacob Frexelis from Terraforming Mars. And we're going to build a space station. This is a cute game. I really liked it. I did play it on Tabletop Simulator. It takes about 60 minutes, 1 to 5, 10 plus. I think this is really, really good. I, I think it's kind of like an Ares Mars type thing where you're going to build your stations. You're going to move. I, I think it's a worker placement as well. And it is another uh, one to five player, 10 plus, uh, about a 60 minute game. 
So hopefully we can be able to uh, get that to the table fairly soon and show you how to play that. Oh, Kaven, I, I just bought it at Hexi Studios. I don't know anything about this game. The game is by Philip Melozunski and Jane Zaltsky. And again, Orbital Scraper. Uh, this is where you're going to mine gems and take cards. I did look at a review for it. I, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be sorry that I bought this or not. Uh, when I was watching Z Garcia, he was like, well, it's kind of quirky. And yeah, quirky games can be fun. Um, I think what's really neat are these standees that are uh, plexiglass. And uh, those are awesome. I believe that uh, another game I'm going to show you in a moment has these as well. Miniatures, I love miniatures, don't get me wrong, but this is a quality life that I think is better for the miniatures. A, it comes pre-painted. B, I don't have to paint anything. B, uh, you can see I can, hopefully it'll fit in this little tiny box and be not be a nuisance with itself, uh, kind of like other games where you're going to be like that and the box is only that. But that is uh, Cave-In. It is two to four players. It plays in about 45 minutes, so they say. Uh, I'm pity there's no solo mode on it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I know you see this, but let's let's power through first. Uh, Battlegrounds. This, this system's been around since 2005. I have a video done of me playing the new content. So I'm just taking a sneak peek. Here are the Risen Kingdom, and here are the Orcs and Goblins. The, the Risen Kingdom. Uh, and I also had a look at the uh, or, was it Orcs and Goblins set, but this is a basically a miniatures in, with cards, and basically each card you can just see that there represents a unit, and you roll uh, some dice, and there's a lot of dice rolling, uh, and you move them along. Everything you need is in the box, including how to measure, because uh, it measures basically on a two and a half side or a three and a half side of a card. Very, very cool. I do have a video of this. It is coming. Uh, again, it is a bit in the coordination of the uh, Kickstarter, but I will maybe take a closer look at these and maybe put up another tutorial to show you some of the backlog. Now, if anybody has any of these and want to get rid of them, let me know. Uh, these are very hard to get. I did, did talk to the designer, and, and he was like, yeah, distribution's a mess, man, because uh, there's like only one place that you can buy them now the it's it's not it's crazy the expense to ship them i try to get like two of these little tiny boxes which in canada would ship for about 15. they wanted 70 dollars to ship i mean like really dudes that's probably because they use a third-party shipper I, I i've talked to alex about that and he's um he's a third-party shipper and they, they tack on like 25 or 30 bucks just for them next up We'll just throw this one up. We have a Valeria, Card Kingdom's Dark Swarm. For those who don't know what Valeria is, this game's been around for quite a while. It has had multiple expansions. In fact, they keep expanding. I've got all the games in the series, uh, and, and it, it is a great game. It's really based on resource management and some cards. This particular one, it's kind of like Mirakuchu. I hope I got that right, where you lay out a, a table and you roll dice, you pick out which ones you want to buy with the resources that you have, and the game, the ones that you buy and are in your tableau will trigger, depending on those dice rolls. Fun game, high fantasy. Uh, this is better than, so we have some trackers now, and we have a couple promos that came with it. And the really nice bit about this particular one is the big box and you can just see here there, there's Valeria a card kingdom right there that is the the box that I have now and I'm going to have to transfer it to the big box a lot of a lot of games seem to be moving to the big boxes which is I'm grateful for in some respects and other respects it's like how the hell am I supposed to store that where it takes up four games on a shelf um yeah well we'll deal with that in, a, in my own eventual way. Someday I'll show you my room, but it's a disaster. Let's just say there's games everywhere. I've tried to organize and my shelf space is limited and uh, the floor is starting to look like a sea of games. And here we are! Darkest Night. We know this game is around. This is the second edition. 
Uh, I don't have the miniatures for it. We will solve that problem because the miniatures are easy to get. This was not. I happened to find a little open copy. I was a little perturbed because they didn't really say it was an open copy, uh, but it, it looks complete as far as I can tell at this point. I will have to go through it for inventory to make sure everything is there. It looks complete. Everything looks in the box. I checked underneath. The, the decks aren't unsealed. Uh, there's nothing punched out. Nothing seems to be missing here, but I'm a little perturbed, and I will be sending a note to uh, the store in Vancouver, Pastimes uh, Hobbies, and letting them know that I was... They should have let us know that it was not in shrink uh, because I would not have paid the, the full retail value for that, only because of the chance of it not being complete. I think it is complete, uh, it, but it did come in... It was wrapped, but it was not shrink-wrapped. And that just... To, to, as a collector, that perturbs me that I was not able to take that shrink off, and I paid a brand new a, br a new price for a game that was already open. That usually devalues it by probably twenty bucks, and I'm going to ask them politely that uh, I would like a twenty dollar store credit because I feel a little bit uh, not ripped off, but uh, just they should have told me up front the condition, and the condition is. Very, very new, excellent, but it's not in shrink. I'm not going to talk about that too much. What's done is done. I'm not giving this mm -hmm. game up. It took me too freaking long to find it. Um, this was one of two Grail games that I finally got in this month. The other one being Discworld. The other one being Ankh, uh, Discworld's Ankh Morkbrook. Uh, of course, that's based on Nanny Narkin. And I looked at Nanny Narkin because people say, well, why don't you just buy Nanny Narkin? It's cheaper. Actually not. Um, it was a limited run. Uh, it is almost as much money now in Canada as it was for what I paid for Discworld. And quite frankly, I'm happy with the Discworld because it's all about the theme, not the game. Uh, it's a simple filler. We're going to cover it, but in a little while, uh, I am having to slow down now because of my work now. I'm back to work. I've had vacation for the last three weeks. I don't know how I'm going to get to any of these games at all. Okay, here's the big one. I've been... Oops, let me take myself back in the picture. Here's the big one, and this is, I've been waiting for this one, Upriser. Upriser, oh, it's too early in the morning. It's only 3 o'clock in the morning. Damn dogs got me up. Uprising, Curse of the Last Emperor. This is a neat game. Now, there's no thing on the back. That's kind of interesting. Uh, it's Nemesis Games. Um, it is uh, 14 and up. And it's a kind of exploring game. It's different. Uh, I've played it on Tabletop Simulator. There's lots of... Uh, one Stop Co-op has just covered it, I think. I, I think one of the guys did. And it intrigues me. It is an area control game. Uh, you can play uh, solo, I believe. He was playing it. There's a cooperative version. There's a competitive version. So I'm really interested to dig into this. I believe, and I, I haven't opened it yet, and we'll do an opening soon, that these are also acrylic. So that is pretty neat. Now, I did get an extra dice set. You can see there's a ton of dice here, all different colors and skulls and shields. We have a little, little mini, mini armory of Azul Uprising. So there's little wee cards. I don't know what these are. It's an armory, so it probably could be stuff that you can use. And we have, looks like an expansion. The Arch Nemesis Expansion. Again, nothing on the back that tells me what this game is about. I, I kind of know, but I don't know what this is about. We're going to again have to explore this uh, a little bit. Ages 14 and else. It doesn't tell you how long to play. It's going to take to play. It doesn't tell you how the player counts. Um, a little lack of information. If it's going to go to retail, uh, it's going to be a problem for people uh, because, you know, when you don't have a description of the game on the back, it means they're going to have to go to board game. Not a big problem, you know, with our phones today, but, you know, I, what can I say? I like going into game stores as much as I like shopping online. I love going into game stores, and I love lifting the boxes, and I love turning them over and looking at the art and the sides, and, hey, it's one of what? Wait a minute, there's nothing here. And there's nothing really to show the components. So this is, as much as it's beautiful artwork, it's a wasted space. They should have had a picture of the game. Uh, and some of the components and sort of describe what's in the box and sort of the high level thing that you're trying to do. Now in this case it's area control and against the emperor and 
or they call it something else. I don't know. We'll find out. I, I saw the video two or three days ago. But that is, oh my God, what is on my table or coming to my table and uh, coming to a channel near you, which is North of 60 Gaming. Of course, some of these games may get played. Some of them won't. Uh, depends on their size. Uh, I am limited in space, as you know. However, if you like what you saw, please hit the like, subscribe. I really appreciate it when you do subscribe uh, and when you make comments uh, because it shows a little appreciation of what I do and how I do it and hopefully you enjoy them and get some enjoyment out of it and get some knowledge about board games and some of the trials and tribulations of, oh my god, what's on my table? And, uh, and have some fun with my videos, make fun of me, I don't care. You see I'm wearing a toque and a scarf, uh, mainly to indicate that I live in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, which is at about 62 degrees, 47 minutes north, which is in the sub-Arctic. So I don't live that far away from the Arctic Circle. But that is it for me. I am out of here. Uh, I'm going to get this up quickly. If you have any questions, please find me. I am on Board Games for One, Board Games Revolution, the board games, solo board gamers, and various other board game groups. And please reach out, say hi. Anyway, that is it for me. I will see you. I need a freaking coffee. It is about four in the morning. My dog slapped me. I was sleeping. Slap. Wake up, Dad. We need to go out. the dark sound <laughs>